Here we go. Let's take a look at this. Okay, guys, no more fun animations, no goofing around, because it seems to me the last few weeks players are uh -oh. dropping Diablo 4 faster than cupcakes disappearing at a children's birthday party for reasons we could sort of pinpoint and talk about because there are honestly quite a few and by the way please let me know what you all think about this in the comment section below because okay. this is your opportunity to voice your opinion on a platform to a creator that truly gives a not true i ate a lot of cupcakes whenever i was a kid that's true shit about hearing from you and is dying to hear all of your thoughts so hit up that comment Accurate. section i'm sure all of you have heard about the seasonal drama you know because like i bet what it was is he started off and he was going to say a fat kid's birthday party, but he's like, ah, you know, maybe I'll get in trouble for that. And so he dialed it back. I bet that's what happened. That's pretty much splitting the player base in half yeah. right now, which I'm not even sure can be called drama because it's an ARPG game where seasons are pretty much just the basis of content. And a lot of players have been really frightened and taken back by this sort of gameplay style, especially because all the new content that is going to be coming to the game is strictly going to be embedded into the new seasonal realms. This new content also means additional gameplay features, quest lines, battle passes, legendary items, class balance changes, quality of life improvements, and much more. Yeah, I, and, and he mentioned this down here, some are being shared to all realms. Yes, yeah, some of the improvements to the game are actually coming to the eternal realms, but I think this is kind of what the problem is whenever you have a game like Diablo that has such a mass appeal, is that you are attracting at this point people that hear about Diablo because they saw Megan Fox talking about it and they think that she's really hot. You see people that are playing Diablo 4 that heard about it from a commercial on TV. Okay? Like, these are not really your traditional hardcore gamers. It's like Blizzard said it themselves. Like, a couple weeks ago, people still weren't even done with the fucking campaign. So, of course, you're going to have them, the idea to them to restart the game, like, every three months is fucking insane. But the truth is that the game doesn't really need to appeal to those people. And those people are always going to be, by the nature of them being normie, casual players, they are going to be, they're going to come on through and then they're going to leave. That's what's going to happen. And this person is going to hit that wall no matter what. I think that a lot of those people are going to probably play through the campaign, do some nightmare dungeons for a while, and then move on to the next game. That's just realistically what's going to happen, whether it's a season or not, whether they add new content or not. Something that I hope personally that is going to relieve the pressure and concerns throughout the community right now is going to be in the next big developer update on July 6th. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I so? think the next month of news and community response to everything going on with Diablo 4. What day is July 6th? Oh, nice. I'll be able to watch it. Okay, good. Or is going to either make or break the game for the next six months. I'm I think that what's really going to make or break the game for the next six months is if Blizzard actually fixes things proactively. The problem is that there are obvious problems in the game right now that are just the fixes for these problems are being withheld to a date after a date that we don't even know. So it's like, oh, we're going to fix this in season two. Well, what the fuck am I playing season one for? Why do we have to wait for Season 2? This is outrageous. Like, you want people to buy Battle Passes? You want people to keep playing the game, to play your seasons? And you can't fix something? Like, see, I mean, like, so if the seasons are going to be, right? Like, Season season 1 is probably going to come out, like, uh, J July 20th, something like that, right? Maybe uh, July 25th, somewhere around there? Yeah, we don't have a date for Season 1. How the fuck do you expect people to just stick around for a random amount of time until you decide decide to get off your fucking ass and fix the game it's it, it, it's fucking annoying because i i know that it's bad everybody knows it's bad they know it's bad that's why they're fixing it and so what they're saying whenever they say that oh we can't fix this until season two what they're saying is we are going to make you play a certifiably worse version of the game because if it wasn't worse they wouldn't be changing it for at least three months. Are you fucking kidding me? Is this a joke? There is no reason. Thank the console certification system. Really? Well, why does the same thing happen in World of Warcraft? Why did it happen in Diablo 3 whenever it came out before it went to consoles? Hmm. Oh, wow. I wonder what the common denominator is here. Is it consoles or is it fucking Blizzard? 
blizzards. Fucking blizzards. It's just taking too long to fix shit. They don't want to sit around and wait for season two. This is insane. Console approval is two weeks. Yes, it's two weeks, not two months. Personally, on my knees, at the edge of my bed, praying to God every night that the developers have trained and prepared themselves for this doomsday coming, hopefully as well as Chris Farley did at the end of Beverly Hills Ninja, because Zooey Mama, I think we're going to have an upset community and fan base if they haven't. I think a lot of mistakes that video game creators and- I think that what Blizzard should do to fix the season drama is allow the people that bought battle passes for season one to be able to complete their battle pass with alternate objectives in the Eternal Realms. I don't think that it's fair because people bought battle passes, a lot of people bought battle passes, thinking that they would be able to play their character that they started the game on, and they're not able to do that. Guess what? Uh, that's, that's, and, and an ARPG player would be like, oh yeah, of course not, you fucking idiot. But these people are fucking idiots. And, and they're not fucking idiots because they're dumb. They're not stupid people. This person could be a fucking plumber in real life. He could be an electrician. But they don't know shit about ARPGs. So why make them, uh, you know, effectively do something that they don't want to do just so they can play and finish the battle pass. What I'm saying is a lot of people bought the game on a premise that they didn't understand, and it wasn't clearly, right, based off of the feedback. It clearly was not communicated. So I just think that for the first season, at least, they should allow you to finish the battle pass on the Eternal Realms. The battle pass is not an accomplishment. It's a participation reward. And just let these people finish it on the Eternal Realms, and that way they can achieve what they want. And in, in my opinion also, like, I'm going to be real. I would be fine if they pushed all of the changes for season one onto the Eternal Realms on day one, I would be totally fine with that. Because a lot of people don't understand the seasonal approach and at least give them one season to get through the game. That's their fault. Yes, it is their fault. But it's also Blizzard's responsibility to manage that fault and to manage expectations. I think a reasonable person who is a video game enjoyer, right? Not a fan, just an enjoyer. They see a popular game and they are like, wow, this is cool. I'm going to try it out. Maybe I played Diablo 2 in high school. And they play the game and they have no idea about seasons or any of that bullshit because they last played it whenever they were 15 in like 2005. They're a queer. It's just not everyone getting to read or watch their videos. Yes, big surprise. Big surprise that a lot of people that bought a massive mainstream video did not also consume content on the third party websites that talk about that massive mainstream video big fucking surprise yeah that's what i think they should do developers make nowadays is that they're too worried about the future and things coming in six to 12 months from now rather than the issues at hand currently that are upsetting the current player base that are still playing the game right now mm -hmm. Have you guys ever seen that meme of the dog inside of the burning house and the caption is just him saying, oh, this is fine. Yeah. A perfect example of this was the MMORPG New World. This game had... Yeah, it had... It was awful. Somebody says in chat, it's no excuse, know what you're buying, no sense crying about something you neglected to find beforehand. But why? But... But why? Why do that? Who gains whenever you do that? How is this a good decision for anyone? It's a video game. It's supposed to be fun. It's just a game, man. I don't understand. Like, why Why are you going to... Because life isn't fair. Why does everything have to cater to everyone? It's a game. It is a game. Most people play video games because life isn't fair. That's why they're playing video games. Because they go to their job and the, jo the boss's son gets promoted over them or the cute girl gets promoted over them and they're like, I fucking hate this shit. I hate it whenever things aren't fair. I don't understand what's going on. And then guess what? They come home and there's just bullshit. And again, you're gatekeeping a, a fucking content. A, a, you're gatekeeping a battle pass. What the fuck are we doing here? What is this? What are we? Wait, I, I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. Holy shit. Yes, just let them fucking play it on the Eternal Realms. People clearly didn't understand it. It's obvious that it wasn't well communicated. Just let people play season one, the battle pass on the first on the Eternal Realms. It's not a big deal. You make them happy. It's okay. Like, why why punish somebody? Why? What what is it? What is the what why? Why why why? Like there's no reason why. It's so fucking weird. Why do you want to punish people that just didn't understand something about a video game? So weird.
every opportunity to have an incredible future, a successful long-term health with having over a million active players at the game's launch, but they just never solved any of the problems that the community was stating to the developers for months and months at a time. And the player base just- uh, No, 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 that's actually not true. Um, for years and years at a time before the game got released. Okay, let's get it right. Pretty much said screw it and got up and left faster than audiences who went and saw Brendan Fraser's Monkey Bone in theaters back in 2001. The crazy thing is, is that as of right now, one month into Diablo 4's launch, I'm seeing a very similar pattern with the player base. As a content creator... Guys, every single game does this. Every single fucking game gets really popular at the beginning, and then it goes down. Whether it's Lost Ark, whether it's Elden Ring. Look at that. Wow, is Elden Ring dying? Oh my god, it's a month afterwards. They lost over half their players. It's okay for a game to lose the majority of its players after the first month. It's completely fucking okay. And the reason why is because those people were never in it for the long haul anyway. These are the tourists. Other than simply sitting at my computer chair on my ass in a diaper complaining all day, I'm able to talk and host servers with thousands of people in them that communicate and speak about the game and how they feel about it at that current time. Yeah. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. We have one half of the community that I talk to that still enjoys the game and are happy and, and hopeful about it and its future. And to be yeah. honest, I am one of those people. But then we easily have the other half of players that feel like anything past... Some, somebody says, uh, difference is Elden Ring is mostly a single player game, not mine. Okay, fuck you, fuck you. You have to fucking make these fucking examples every time. God damn it. Every fucking time people try to make a comparison. Whoa, wow, look at this. Every league dies after it comes out. Oh, wow, what is this? Damn, like, look at this. Over half the people quit the league after it came out. Every fucking game is like this. This is the way that games work. People play them and then they stop. So stop making these stupid fucking comparisons or these little nuances that you don't even understand. Jesus. Level 70 is too much of a grind in the game and it's too repetitive and boring and the game lacks content or they just feel restricted and controlled too That's much. One -to -one. So they're just going to either wait until season one or simply just call yes. it quits. My biggest question for the people that are waiting until season one is that What's really going to change for the overall betterment of the game that's going to keep you playing longer than well, you... Well, how, how could you possibly ask that question? Like, you don't... There's no way that you know, because they're going to be talking about that whenever Season 1 comes out. Like, or, or whenever they announce it. Like, nobody has any idea. ...are right now. Are we going to focus on putting out that nobody fire knows. that is actively happening and killing off the player base one by one every day, or... I are... really, really disagree with this. I think that this is a natural progression. I think this is a completely natural progression and it's okay that people move away from the game because this is exactly what happens in every single season. Diablo came out on the first, let's be real, came out on the first of June. Let's say it lost half of its players. That is par for the course because that's the way games like this go because the preseason of Diablo is still basically a season of Diablo. People went through the gameplay loop of the season, they hit their apex, they hit their plateau, and they quit the game. The same as we do every league in Path of Exile. The same as I did every league that I played in Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls. There is nothing that is a condemnation of the game because of that. We just going to say, this is fine, and willingly going to put on that temporary blindfold over mm -hmm. our eyes for a couple of weeks, because they're showing us some new shiny cosmetics, Nobody battle passes, and having us forced once again to level up new characters. I just don't want players to have the expectations and to be let down because I followed that yellow brick road before with many games in the past and it honestly left me more stressed out and frustrated with that said game rather than taking the point of a video game to be a bit of a stress reliever and an escape yeah. from this psychotic everyday normal life that we all live Listen. yeah like that's the thing is like for a while i was playing diablo 4 all the time and then i got bored or annoyed with like the way the game was and so i just stopped playing it for a few days and then i came back and i played it for like an hour a day maybe two hours a day and i enjoyed that hour or two hours a day that i played the game and then i played it more and then they made the change to the nightmare dungeons and then i pushed for level 100 and i got it and whenever I kill Uber Lilith and whenever I do my tier 100 dungeon, afterwards, I'll probably fuck around for a little while. But after that, I'm going to stop playing the game. 
and I'm not going to stop playing it because I think it's bad. I'm going to stop playing it because I beat the game. I achieved the goals that I set out in that season or the preseason, whatever it is, and I'm happy. It's the same as in Path of Exile. Like, I got my character to a point where I was happy with it. I might try to improve it a little bit more before the season ends just to show people for a YouTube video because it's kind of funny. But other than that, I quit that league thinking to myself, I enjoyed Crucible League. Last league that I played seriously, I think, was probably um, Lake of Calandra. And I quit Lake of Calandra. Okay. I feel good. I went through the game. It's I'm ready to quit. That's fine. And I'll be back, and I'm happy and excited for the new league to come out so I can do the same thing with a little bit different bells and whistles. And that's the way ARPG works. And I think that's great. I don't think that's a bad thing. That's not a condemnation of the game. It's just people gradually meet their goals, and then they stop playing. And that's okay. And season one for people Diablo like, yeah, has yeah. already been finalized and yeah. finished for quite some time now. And it's going to be launched, and nothing is going to change that. But man, you know what would really surprise me and make me want to smack my mammy is if the developer said, hey, mm -hmm. you know what, guys? Let's We're not. going to take the next few weeks to do everything in our power to make sure the game we have is going to be really refined. We're mm -hmm. going to add that gem tab and implement it into the game. We're going to That's add exactly what they should do. They should say, like, yeah, we're not going to make you wait stories for every single character because it's an absolute atrocity that you can't keep your equipment and legendary aspects any full loot ARPG experience like this one. Your equipment and legendary aspects, full loot ARPG. I, I, I think that you should not be able to keep them into seasons. Like, because that just defeats the point of a season. And for the cherry on top, we're going to do everything in our power to bring you World Tier 5 as soon as we possibly can because we have listened to the... I think that Quinn made a really good point on World Tier 5, and it actually changed my perspective on it. Is that... Why would World Tier 5 matter... If all you do is as soon as you possibly can, you get to World Tier 5 and you don't care about World Tier 4. Because World Tier 3 didn't matter at all. Who gave a fuck about World Tier 3? And Quinn also said, I don't want to get to the point to where we have 16 torment levels. Because I don't want that either. Yeah, you're just moving the goalposts. Maybe they should have a World Tier 5. Maybe. I'm okay with that. But I don't want to see, like, you know, on Season 9 of Diablo 4, okay, now we have World Tier 9. It's too much. I do think there does need to be a difficulty bump after the first one because it's just it becomes so easy in World Tier 4 after you get, like, level 80 or so. But in general, I don't really think that's that big of a problem. Unity. And realize that level 75 onward is simply copy mm -hmm. and pasted mumbo jumbo content and gear that isn't keeping people invested yeah. and interested in the game because leaderboards aren't even coming out for another four months. Well, or that's fine. And again, I think that they should improve the way that loot works too in World Tier 5. They should add in more stats, etc. I think that makes it better. Like, for example, Ancestral Gear is the only set of gear that can roll with uh, resource generation. Uh, and there's other stats that are locked to World Tier 4 or World Tier 3, such as Uniques in general. So I, I don't really think that's a bad thing at all. I actually think that adds a little bit more nuance to the game. But I think that what this guy needs to realize and what a lot of people need to realize with Diablo 4 is that Diablo 4, I think it can improve and I think it should be a little bit better than it is now. But Diablo 4 is not designed to have a chase at the scale of Path of Exile. It's just not designed that way. And that's not their goal and it shouldn't be. Going to take a pause on developing the garbage that people aren't interested in six months from now and do everything in our power to keep the player base that we have right now mm -hmm. as happy as we can. Sincerely, your favorite Android, Bobby Kodak. I'd He's say all the community Android. is He's really asking for, really, for the developers, is to just not be the dog in the burning house, man. Don't focus on the future when your player base is on fire and losing numbers by the day. Focus on the major concerns at hand right now, because if you don't, there won't be as large a future as you would like. I still don't understand why it's going to take two seasons to implement a gem tab. I also He's right about that. I also I, I I don't agree with the doom and gloom that he's that he's having with the game. I I, I don't get that same vibe. I don't. Like I think the I, I've had fun playing the game. I think the game's fun. Uh, you know, the same as like an ARPG. I, I play the game, I hit the pinnacle, and then I stop. Okay, I, I'm good, right? Yeah, I, I think it's a big deal. But with with this, he's totally right. So still don't understand why it's going to take two seasons to implement leaderboards and ladders in a game 
that already has this implemented inside of their other previous Diablo game. To be honest, I expect, I, I understand why they don't want to introduce, introduce leaderboards. It's because things are completely fucking broken and unbalanced, and I don't want people to find out about it by seeing the leaderboards. I get that. I agree with Blizzard with that. They probably should do it differently. However, um, the other part is different uh, with, like, the gem tabs. I'm going to say it once again, by the way, in case anyone is coming in here just skipping the video. I really do enjoy Diablo 4 as a game, and I think it's incredible, and it has amazing potential and a bright future ahead of it. But the biggest issue Blizzard has had yeah. over the last 10 years is that they take longer than a grandmother with severe knee pain climbing up my flight of stairs to implement the most simple changes that the community is begging for. He's Bl completely right about this, and it's not even it, it's not even a question. And they did the exact same thing with Overwatch. They took their fucking time. Remember whenever Overwatch 2 came out and Bastion and May were literally unplayable? You couldn't play them? And this went on for like 10 days? That's insane. It's the same thing that's happened with WoW. Blizzard has mastered better than anybody out there at putting yeah. that Blizzard polish on any game genre, making it easily accessible to the casual player base to get them to enjoy a game for a mm -hmm. set amount of time. Their biggest problem, however, has always been keeping them there. I will tip my hat to the Diablo 4 developers because I honestly... The Diablo 4 developers should not seek to retain players, like, indefinitely. You should seek to bring them back every season or every other season or every three seasons. That's what PoE does. PoE doesn't try to make you play the entire season. They just try to create an entertaining and a good gameplay loop for you to play through the game during that season. Like, don't be afraid to let people walk away from your game because people that walk away from the game are a thousand times better than people that are pushed away. And people got pushed away from the game in Shadowlands. They got pushed away from the game in BFA. And guess what? A lot of them didn't come back for Dragonflight. We didn't hear anything about the sale numbers of Dragonflight, did we? You know why? It's because they weren't very good. Like, you can bet your fucking ass if Dragonflight had massive sale numbers, Blizzard would be talking about this everywhere. So I do think they have good intentions for the game, and I'm really hoping they're going to do the right thing and shock the world with this game and listen to the player base. They've played it super safe with everything involved in the game so far. And Diablo 4 pretty much is just a repolish yeah. of Diablo 2 and 3, combining them together. And honestly, the game works and what it does well, it does incredibly well. There it is. I love the game and I think it's only going to get better with time. Let's just please God diminish the amount of player base casualties as much as we can by solving the problems at hand right now. These are not player-based casualties. These are natural progressions of the game as an outcome of it being a seasonal ARPG. This is completely natural and it's completely fine. I think the dog in the house is in the house, except I don't think it's on fire. Please God, don't monkey bone me. Give me the Brendan Fraser movie in Diablo 4 I know it can be. I want, I want the mummy, not monkey bone. Let me know what you guys think about all this in the comment section because I would love to hear back from you guys. Anyways, by the way, we also want to take a moment to shout out our channel members over here on YouTube because so, you all are the number one supporters of the Comeback Kids. And we absolutely could not keep this channel going without you all. I think he's got some The giveaway good for our channel members this month of July is going to be the brand new Razer uh, Kraken V3 no Hypersense headset worth over $130. So if you all are interested in earning exclusive rewards for the Comeback yeah. Kids personally, Most as well as the opportunity of being offered campaign. giveaways yeah. constantly, click that join button below the video or hit that link in the description to become an official Comeback Kid to today video. and show some support. This guy's done a lot of good videos I know it's before. a little bit of a rant, but that's all for today. I love you all. I Let me know what you it. think. Until the very end, my name's Scott from the Comeback Kids. I'll see you all in the There's next one. There's a video one. right there. Peace. Make sure give him some support. He's got the Dr. Disrespect outro. I don't like it. I just really want to say that, like, I just don't agree with the doom and gloom, and I think the game is doing a lot better than what people are making it out to be. That's all I'm really trying to say. And I think that people moving away from the game as a natural progression through finishing their character is totally okay, completely healthy, and not bad.